The Atomic Energy Council, in collaboration with the International Atomic Energy Agency, is holding a week-long engagement to review site safety for nuclear installations. The program focuses on site characteristics for radiological environmental impact assessments as government advances its nuclear energy ambitions. It's essential to thoroughly understand the site geology and geological features of the nuclear Participants are examining site evaluation processes, licensing requirements, and safety considerations while also receiving hands on training in assessing safety analysis reports. And once that report is submitted, what are the processes for a regulator to go through to evaluate that report? Because it forms the basis for the regulator to give a license to approve a site for any nuclear installation. And we try to provide uh, recommendations or comments to uh, the report so that um, the expert from Uganda, so by that time, I hopefully you have a formal uh, utility, so operator organization as well, so that uh, operator organization can do their own work to fill the gap. This initiative is part of the Council's strategy to strengthen the competence of staff and stakeholders tasked with regulating nuclear installations. Because before you install a nuclear installation, a site has to be approved and licensed, and this licensing is done by the Atomic Energy Council. The government has identified four potential sites for nuclear power plants in Ibuyende, Nakasongola, Chiruhura, and Lamo, projected to generate 24,000 megawatts of power. Biende project, that is about 8,400 megawatts. Nakasongola, 7,200. Lamo and Chiruhura, 4,000. The government has expanded electricity generation capacity from 180 megawatts in 2005 to over 2,000 megawatts in 2024. Even if all hydro biomass, geothermal, and peak resources were fully exploited, these sources alone cannot meet national development targets. This is why nuclear energy is being considered to bridge the energy deficit. Achieving a total generation capacity of 52,481 megawatts with 24,000 megawatts from nuclear will require over 900 trillion Uganda shillings. What we have entailed in, 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 in that uh, funding and costing is just not only the project, the, the nuclear power plants, but also the infrastructure that comes along with uh, the nuclear power plants. Whether it is uh, roads, transmission lines, land, um, we are looking at uh, uh, establishing uh, uh, centers of excellence, uh, labs that we are talking about in Biende, for example. So all that uh, comes with the costing that we uh, we're talking about. The budget is not a hindrance. It has been, these have been achieved elsewhere. We hope with the economic growth of our country, this, these are achievable targets. With our new natural resources being used uh, and uh, economically, uh, economically uh, processed, if you look at the mineral potential we have, the oil and the gas, and the other economic base of the country. We hope that those targets are achieved. Financial strategies for the projects include direct government investment, partnership with private players, and support from international credit agencies. As government pursues its Vision 2040 nuclear ambitions, a skilled workforce is needed for success. That's where now the focus is most, to get some people in those areas with special skills in nuclear, engineering, nuclear science and technology. But the other areas which also play a role in the nuclear industry, we already have some Ugandans who are trained and these ones will also play a role. The Atomic Energy Council is also developing new regulations covering site evaluation, licensing and safety protocols for nuclear installations and research reactors. Ivan Kahwa, UBC News. Yes.